When everything changes, nothing changes. You see? When everything changes, nothing changes. But all this, this isn't what we had in mind. When everything changes, nothing does. These words are spoken by a man seeking to make a difference in an ever-changing world. A world so perfect, yet so predictable, it became unlike life at all. And really, what is life when simulation is almost identical to it? Transistor poses questions and concepts like these to the player, but never asks them. You are simply led through a journey, a beautiful, haunting journey, and given the freedom and respect to decide what it all means for yourself. Transistor is one of three titles currently released by Supergiant Games, and of those three it's my favourite. It is equal parts vague and precise, its story consistent and contradictory. Its concept is both artistic and logical. It is so many things that I struggle to really put it into words why this game is so different to so many others like it. But I'm going to give it a go. First, the things I can easily explain. Transistor looks and sounds beautiful. The art design as well as its implementation is absolutely top notch. You really get the sense that this place is a haven to its citizens. It is complete perfection. So perfect in fact to some of the characters it comes across almost sterile, even in its variety. There is so much art and beauty lining every wall and floor and yet there's nothing ugly to contrast it. It's almost as if it may as well just be blank. By the way, I'm not saying this is a negative. I'm saying it from the perspective of certain characters in the story. The city is designed this way by the developers, as well as in canon by Cloudbank's denizens. Everything in this world is voted on and decided beforehand. The colour of the sky, the weather, the construction of new buildings are all predictable and are exactly what the people want. Or at least, what they think they want. The antagonists of this story are the Camerata. Not villains, but a group of four individuals who want to make the world a better place. They recognize the staleness of Cloudbank's predictability, its constant predictable changes, and they wanted to do something different entirely. They were to use the transistor, something of an all-powerful paintbrush, to digitize the souls of the creative and the influential and use their ideas, their souls as paint upon the canvas that is Cloudbank itself. Our main character Red was one such target to be absorbed into the transistor. But something went wrong for the Camerata. Red's bodyguard and lover took her place and Red took the transistor. This is the setup to the game, and what's fascinating about it is that we're never really told what Cloudbank is. The world appears to be almost digital in nature. Statistics are attached to every object of interest. The process, the enemies of the game, can create and destroy matter as if it were data in a computer, and even the name of the town sounds kind of like a data storage service. So has technology advanced to such a point in this world where reality and the digital are interchangeable? Can something as immense and complex as human soul be translated into ones and zeros? Or is this world simply a simulation? A layer within reality? If so, inside the transistor is yet another layer. A simulation of life within a simulation of life. At this point, what is life anymore? I think the thought experiments in this game are extremely clever because they're never forced on the player. They're only there if you want to think about them. 
In the same vein, there's a place called the country that's often mentioned, and yet it's ambiguous whether this means a reality above the current one, like a reality that Cloudbank is contained by, or if it's something of an afterlife, or even both. All we know is that it's stated that the country isn't somewhere you go for a visit and come back. It's a one-way trip. Transistor's battle system even mirrors these themes. The transistor can perform functions in reality akin to how a computer would execute programs. To do this, you stack up commands within a allotted amount of memory, and then execute the full program once you're happy with the result. Red will then quickly run the whole move. You then have a cooldown period where you have to avoid enemies without the use of the transistor. Not only does this feel right in terms of the narrative of the world made digital, but it also creates an interesting pseudo turn-based dynamic, where your turn exists within the transistor's planning phase and the enemy's turn exists in real time. Everything in this game is a collision of art and logic, life and simulation. The result is fascinating, and the answers, much like the questions themselves, are ambiguous and left to the player to decide upon. If there was ever an argument for whether games could be considered art, Transistor is one of the few examples to settle that dispute. It is thought-provoking in a way that could only be established in an interactive media. It gives the player time to breathe, to explore and to understand the world at their own pace and yet still manages to cut to the core of some real, touching, relatable humanity through all of the almost nihilistic bleakness of the world's implications. If you have even a shred of interest in a beautifully designed world, a short but interesting story, and a soundtrack that will stick with you for months to come, you owe it to yourself to play Transistor. Thank you for listening everyone. Thanks for joining me on another Star Games. If you like this, subscribe and see some of the other videos I've done. We also do Twitch streams over at twitch.tv forward slash voxelstar. See you again!